Now, what I'm about to share will come to you as good or bad, depending on your opinion on whether Ghana's High Commissioner to South Africa should be sacked for his divisive comments. Our interaction on the discriminatory comments made by the diplomat has entered the second week. And with a number of you expressing fatigue yesterday, a lot of you were tired about discussing that issue. Well, Information Minister Mustafa Hamid has revealed President Okufado He's accepted the apology rendered by the High Commissioner and has decided to give him another chance. See what I said. If you were saying he should be sacked, this will not be good news for you. And if you were part of those who said, you know, give him a second chance, then this is good news for you. Well, uh, let's get your comments here on Facebook. And um, Tom Aquinas Samba says, 2020, he's questioning, says, these NDC goons still have hope. Their founding father had cautioned them. And, uh, well, I, I don't know what that has to do with um, Mr. Yisi Boating being given a second chance. But a comment that says, where on earth is the new definition of priority, meaning others will be taken care of, or others wouldn't be taken care of? And uh, he goes on to talk about how previous administrations um, ordered their appointees to give priorities. To, so just uh, I'd love it if you could share some evidence with us. But Mensa Sissel says, what's the meaning of a smack in the face of the NDC? Ghana belongs to... Okay, according to him, he thinks the NPP. Baby Yetimoni says, no qualms at all, but in 2020, those Ghanaians who are not card bearing members of the N NPP and therefore are not Ghanaian enough to merit favors will think twice. Kelvin Afrim says, uh, well, he th says Muhammad did the same and lost the elections. Nana is doing the same, and the result will be the same during the next elections. And says, hashtag politicians. Never land. Phineas Redu says, of course, no one sacked the one who said even if he tied the rules of Kumasi with gold, Ashanti's will not be grateful. Akbaribo Philip Apiga says, not surprised at all. After 2020, after all, 2020 is not far. These are the people that will pull his party to defeat. Samuel Adler says, an unintentional act or remark causing embarrassment to its originator. From what happened, any reliable student of even elementary English wouldn't describe the situation as a gaffe. Why? There was an element of intention to the statement. He stuck to it until he was, he was forced uh, by pressure within and without to render a wish wash of apology. Uh, okay, I know Joy FM is very used to that word. All right, okay, thank you. Uh, some more for your comments. If you just join us here on Journeys Interactive, well, Mustafa Hamid, Information Minister, says. Uh, President Okufado has accepted His Excellency Yisi uh, apology, and so he'll give him a second chance. And a lot of you are saying, okay, we don't mind. 2020, we'll see what happens to those who are not more Ghanaian. But let's move on and talk about something happening also within the NDC and the MPP. Now, Kokwa Nidoha has dared government to prosecute appointees in the previous administration. They accused of being corrupt. Uh, if you remember uh, very well, there's been this back and forth and uh, North Tong MP Samuel Okutitua Blakwa over the weekend while speaking on News File, our news analysis program, said enough of the litany of uh, corrupt or corruption allegations and corruption issues just go ahead and prosecute and yesterday we heard vice president dr mahmoud balmia says well very soon and uh, mustafa hamid came to buttress that point they said you know what the attorney general has even started you know filing some cases and koku says this morning mr koku anido who says this morning you know what just go ahead and prosecute us also ampene uh, says you're so corrupt you feel sp is meant for the ndc note that this office is for all corrupt citizens talking about the special prosecutors and apia kubi williams uh, is actually laughing and says but is this special prosecutor meant to target corrupt officials or the ndc uh, I'm, I'm sure apia kubi williams and the earlier per the person who earlier commented may not have um some background to all of this. Like I just shared with you, there's been a lot of conversation going on about if you say we are corrupt, just prosecute us. And yesterday we had the information minister and the vice president commenting on it. So and Mr. Anido says, just go ahead and do it. And Sandro Charles says, the MPP should bring the special prosecutor. Uh, Ken Foriata, he says, will be the first person they will jail, followed by the two deputy, chief, deputy chiefs of staff. Uh, Abu Jinafo and Asen Sobwacha. We know that the two deputies have been cleared. Uh, Lukman Dot Raul says, the prosperity of Ghana shouldn't be accusations and other stuff, but a perfect national development plan from all uh, opposition and everyone by uniting ourselves. Halil Maestro says, I hope this special prosecutor's office is going to deal with corrupt officers, irrespective 
of their political color and he says Allah help us and um, also on the point of the special prosecutor we've heard uh, civil society come out to say there's a problem with the appointment process of the special prosecutor because if he's appointed by the president uh, then there's a bit of uh, difficulty when you have to prosecute people who are on the president's side in other words belonging to the party in position uh, how will it turn out? Well, we all wait to see. But a lot of you have been sharing your comments with us here on Joy News Interactive. We'll take a quick breather. When we come back, we'll be talking about poverty, which affects quite a number of Ghanaians. Please don't go away. <laughs> There's more of that here on Joy News Interactive when I share a video of the day with you. Don't go away. But let's talk about something really disturbing. Now, when a poor person dies of hunger, it does not happen because God did not take care of him or her. It has happened because neither you nor I wanted to give that person what he or she needed. That's according to Mother Teresa. Now, the gap between the rich and the poor is at its highest level ever in Ghana today. The top 10% consume about a third of all Ghana's income, whereas the poorest consume about 1.7%. Can we really develop a country like this? And is the situation fair? We've been asking uh, you this question on Facebook because there are a lot of theories to this. Some believe that some are poor because it's their choice. Others believe, well, people are poor because the system doesn't allow them to make wealth. Abu Bakar Dazlin said, but still the poor pay for the light they consume and the rich don't. Still the poor feed the rich by paying taxes. The poor struggle to build houses for themselves and the rich in the name of government appointees. Still the rich spend money meant for the poor and set up committees to spend more in the, in the name of retrieving those monies. This gap will never end until the poor also lead the rich. That's an interesting write-up. And uh, Apia Labi Emmanuel says, Ghana needs prayers, guys. God works in mirac miraculous ways, he believes. He can just send up a... Oh, really? I mean, this is quite harsh. He wants... Uh, I'm not, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna read this sorry up here but the lion walker says and this is because people are living in a country where everything is imported no proper production all the raw materials are being exported so how can the people get jobs to feed themselves Dala and Nicola says the problem is multifaceted the, there is a huge disparity in income levels within the public sector the Labor Commission and the labor unions have failed woefully to ensure the private sector workers receive adequate compensation for their sweat and above all our educational system is defective from crash to the tertiary level it does not encourage technical education and entrepreneurship Takao Jeremiah says a country full of greed selfishness and dead conscience what is the top 10% doing with all the wealth acquired sometimes, and I like that, sometimes, because sometimes we generalize issues when it comes to discussing poverty. He says, acquired sometimes through foul means. You live in one big mansion and you have several others wasted. You drive in the latest car and you have others wasting in the garage. What a pitiful nation. How do, we, how do you expect us to grow? J.C. Delado Gelly says, until political leaders begin to take responsibility for the pressing needs of the citizenry, we should always be ready to see the gap widen because those who are taxed to bridge the gap are the same people widening it. That's according to J.C. Gelly. He says there's a total disconnect between the elected and the elector. God have mercy. Randolph de Baron says, it's now the turn of the government to show concrete evidence of trying to end poverty and avoid the daily theory to end poverty, which never comes to reality. If the government would start the elimination of poverty at the district level effectively, its impact will be beneficial to the nation as a whole. They should reduce huge government, um, I'm sure you mean expenditure, and investigate and prosecute all government and public officials who engage in various acts of corruption. And the selfishness must stop. By so doing, the national kick can be spread across board. The mismanagement of the economy must be reviewed. 
at all times. Now we are talking about poverty and how to deal with it. A lot of you have been sharing your comments with us here. Now, one way people try to deal with poverty is to set up charities to raise funds and support people. Actress Juliet Ibrahim has a charity that supports kidney patients and she holds an annual Halloween dress-up party to raise funds. Now, this year's edition happened a few days ago to support a young gentleman battling kidney problems. Despite the immense appreciation for her work, many have condemned the actress for what she wore to the party. Let me just show you what she wore and we'll be taking a lot of your comments on that. Yes, yeah, so that's what she wore, dressed as a Catholic nun. And um, I mean, from here, people don't see a problem with it. But when you scroll up, that's where a lot of people have a problem. And uh, they've been bashing her real hard. We'll put this on Facebook just to pick a few of your comments uh, on this particular one. Christian Ip says, the one standing by her what kind of dressing is that okay she's actually quoting something michael teria says he exclaims ghana everything we want to do you carry halloween to ghana he's actually writing in pigeon there celestine says we don't need any halloween in this country uh increase carboros carbo Kabo, sorry says we see them we know them we know how they work but sorry to those who don't know how they operate I'm wondering what he's trying to insinuate. And um, Christian Ip says, well, I think it's a nice idea. Now, he, she comes, uh, or he comes. I'm not sure if it's a female or a male. Uh, this person sharing the comment comes to the point of, uh, it's a good initiative, but uh, she should pass it through the right means to get money. Uh, Joel says, oh, come on. A Halloween costume is also an issue. Sister, next time, make it shorter, please. That's according to Joel. And... Ishmael says, I care less if she wants, she should go naked. It doesn't put food on my table. And um, <laughs> Ike Toriski says, next story, please. Richard thinks, oh, that's a nice look. And Abana says, but this doesn't concern me. Collins says, I wish all sisters are like this, uh, referring to Catholic sisters. And uh, Kwabna Adayanki says, the dress is cute, angelic. And Jerry Dazi says, she needs... Uh, deliverance. Farouk says, oh, okay, in some phone call, I'm sure you're trying to say it. That's it. I mean, in other words, nonsense. And uh, <laughs> Asma actually says, say it and say it again, my brother. And Jennifer says, who cares what she wears? And Ohineba says, oh, no. Okay. So a lot of comments coming there on the costume of actress Juliet Ibrahim uh, for her fundraiser. It's actually a Halloween dress-up party. And she put this together to help a young man who is uh, struggling with kidney problems. And she has that charity, and they support patients uh, with kidney problems. But a lot of people aren't excited. They say, look, it's not about that. We don't like the fact that you take something that's dear to us, especially Catholics who revere their nuns, and you dress like that, looking like a nun, uh, but uh, with a twist to it. So, well, we've been taking a lot of comments on that, but it's now time to show you our video of the day. <laughs>
Well, so that's our video of the day. Something to lighten up your day, isn't it? Thank you so much for your company here on Joy News Interactive. I'm Venice Abubedu. Don't forget, we are still interactive. Like our page if you haven't uh, on Facebook for your Joy News on TV. You can also follow us on Twitter. Our name is Joy News on TV or you can follow me on Twitter. My name is Venice underscore AB. See you again next time. Take care. Enjoy the rest of your day.